everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today, July 10th, U.S. stock markets falling quite quickly. July 9th, the Dow fell 361 points. After the market closed, the Dow futures are down another 240 points as we speak. So in total, that's 600 points falling in the last 12 hours. A little bit of a quick move. Why is this happening? Is this going to continue? Especially looking at the tech market, the NASDAQ, the U.S. stock market is totally different, bipolar right now. The tech market keeps going up. The tech stocks like Alphabet, Amazon keep going up, while the other stocks keep aren't really moving. What the heck's going on? What should you do? I want to talk about all these points. Also, I want to talk about a little bit, a piece of news today that came out, I think is really important for the stock markets regarding Trump and his tax situation. This all has to do with the stock markets, whether this is going to keep going up or down or whatever. I will try to answer all these questions in the next 15 minutes. Those of you new viewers, I'm a former Wall Street guy. Uh, I've been investing almost all my money basically since I started mowing lawns when I was 12 years old. <laughs> and basically put everything I could into the markets. Uh, and then I started my own hedge fund with a partner when I was 26, sold my stake when I was 30, traveled the world, and then came to Tokyo where I was born about half a year ago and started social media for the first time. Got about a uh, quarter million followers, super, super thankful, and it just started this English channel. So first today, let's divide this up into analyzing the U.S. market. What's going on? Why is the Dow going down? What the heck is going on with the tech market? When is Which one is right? Is the tech market right or is the normal Dow Jones right? Number two, I want to talk quickly about a big piece of news that came out today. It's not highlighted that much in the media, but I think it warrants more attention. Trump and what happened with the Supreme Court case regarding his tax, tax so, uh, so buena. Number three, I'll give you my recommendation as usual. What I'm doing, I will let you know. And this is, again, my advice, but you have to base it uh, on your own judgment of what to do. I want to always give this uh, prognosis of that. This is my of what I'm doing, but you must always make your own decision at the end regarding investment advice. So let's get started here. First and foremost, what's going on with the U.S. market? Amazon is going straight up, right? NASDAQ going straight up. This is on a weekly time frame, a weekly chart. Even if you look at the daily chart, the NASDAQ showing lots of strength here, barely moving, barely budging at all. Meanwhile, the Dow Jones, a little bit of a different situation, right? The Dow Jones and the S&P 500. Yes, they re recovered on a medium term basis, but they're not at all time highs like the NASDAQ. Not even close. And they're showing a little bit of weakness here. And this has been consistent. This has been a consistent theme for the last few months. Even just this month, I uh, reported this in my video today about U.S. stock markets. Even just this month today, uh, we see that the Dow Jones is significantly underperforming um, the NASDAQ market. The Dow Jones today was down 1.4%. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ was up today about 0.8%, the NASDAQ 100. Huge difference, about a 2% move difference today. So what's going on? This is very simple. It's the tech market that is pushing the market up, right? The Dow, the S&P, they have a lot of different other industries in there. Utilities, consumer discretionary, energy, financials, transportation, leisure. All of this is really heavily affected by coronavirus. The least affected, at least according to the data thus far, economic data, uh, stock market uh, data, actually company fundamentals, their earnings reports, all show that the tech market, especially online groceries, is still doing quite strong. Therefore, Amazon is doing quite well. Cloud technology is doing quite well. Companies like Zoom are doing very well. So this is pushing the market higher. But what's going to happen going forward? Looking at the Dow Jones here, <clears throat> we're seeing this chart. Today it was down 1.4%. Right now the futures are down another 0.8%. So it's quite a significant move in the last two days. Now this MACD, if you don't know how to use MACD, please watch my video on how to use trends how to find trends, 
uh, and how to use charts. I'll post it at the end of this video. But we've seen MACD here has been pretty accurate so far on a short term daily basis. And recently, it's very difficult to read this as it went up and now it's going down again. So it's crossing up and it's crossing down. It doesn't seem to me like it's really made a decision on yet on what direction it wants to go. Again, I'm using a MACD right now. This is based on 8, 18 and 6. Uh, it's been pretty accurate for me so far over the last few months, but feel free to use your own numbers. Again, stochastics, I'm using a little bit larger numbers than usual. I'm using 28, 6, and 6, and this has been pretty accurate from what I've seen so far. And this is showing still a general downtrend, but it's trying to cross right now, so it hasn't really made a decision. This, it's very, very difficult to read right now, the trend in the market, which is a reason why I've been recommending so far most of uh, my recent videos to just decrease a lot of my short-term positions. This is short-term positions, right? Long-term, of course, I'm still keeping my long-term investment portfolio, but short-term, very little positions because I can't read the trend right now, and that's okay. That's fine. Sometimes you just can't read the trend. But to me, what's interesting is the pushing point, the pulling point for this market has been tech stocks, NASDAQ. And within NASDAQ right now, the biggest push by far is coming from Amazon, humongous push higher here, humongous push. Now, this is going to be a technical analysis. I'm not even going to get into the fundamentals. But looking from a technical perspective, the volume is not very high here. Yes, it's high, it's going up like this, but the volume is not very high. And what I actually want to point out is the Bollinger Band here. The Bollinger Band usually is a statistical um, statistical range in which the stock should trade based on the Recent volatility, it calculates the statistical variance, and then it calculates the range in which the stock should trade. It's been pretty accurate in the fact that you can see right here when Amazon bulged out of this uh, Bollinger brand, uh, we're seeing that it happened right here, uh, right around end of April. It kind of snapped back inside into the band. So it tends to be sort of a magnetic band that it doesn't really go outside of the band too much. It might temporarily. Right now, it has just gone through the band again temporarily. So I think that you're going to see a little bit of stability, a little bit of selling in Amazon here, which sort of makes me indicate to me that I think actually uh, this is a little bit of a weakening sign for the market, especially the NASDAQ market. I think you're going to see a little bit of selling because recently the last few days have been Amazon and this is going through the Bollinger Band. I think you're going to see some pressure here, which will in turn have pressure on the NASDAQ, which is in turn probably going to have pressure on the overall market. Uh, and again, it's not just technicals, guys. I mean, obviously, coronavirus cases today came in on July 9th at 223,000. It's an all time high. Uh, we're definitely in the second wave. I've been talking about this since July, sorry, June 19th, when I first saw this data and said, guys, this is not one cockroach. There's never one cockroach in statistics. And it's just gone on to we're definitely in a second wave. This is mostly caused by the U.S. Uh, within the U.S., it's mostly caused by uh, Florida. Uh, Texas, California, where there's daily new cases are rising. But you actually also have India, which not much of the media is focusing on. India only had about 15,000 new cases per day only a week or two weeks ago. And now it's at a 25, 26,000 range. So overall, looking at the markets here, to me, it seems like we have a little bit of a downside risk, especially, I think, in the tech market, given the move here in Amazon. Uh, we're at the top of a Bollinger Band. And given the fact that the Dow Jones is already sort of creeping a little bit lower, really not sure, but showing a little bit of weakness, I would think that the NASDAQ market here is probably going to start to see a little bit of weakness as well. Okay, now that we've gotten out of the way, let's talk a little bit more long term on the stock market here. A big piece of news came out today, which is very little highlighted in the media. The Supreme Court rejects Trump's bid, block New York subway a seeking tax records. What the heck does this mean? This is a piece of news that came out today in the Wall Street Journal. Basically, Trump has not yet submitted his tax record. He's one of the, I don't know if he's the only president, but not many presidents, almost all presidents have submitted their tax records and he has not. It's just a fact. I'm not taking any sides here. As a result, the New York DOJ, as far as I think it's the DOJ, has requested a sub -buena to Trump because Trump has been submitting his tax returns in New York. Most of his business is based in New York. Trump rejected this and he filed a report to uh, basically file a lawsuit saying 
he doesn't have to do this. He's taken this all the way to the Supreme Court, and now the Supreme Court has actually rejected Trump's bid to block the sub -winer. Basically, the Supreme Court is saying that you have to abide by this New York sub and you have to basically disclose your tax returns. This is sort of a big deal. Right now, this election is really going to be based, I think, a lot on what's going to happen in the coronavirus. And right now, Biden, if you're looking at this is 538, this is uh, averaging together a lot of different national polls, both on the right side, the left side, conservative and liberal. Biden's lead is getting wider and wider. And not just that, in the swing states as well, it depends on the swing state, but he is taking some swing states. Both actually Biden and Trump are taking swing states right now at the moment, but it's a little bit of a precarious situation. And therefore, I think this is going to have an effect on the markets. If Trump releases his track records, the media will use this to bash him. Definitely. No matter what's in there, whether he broke the law or he didn't break the law, he will get bashed. If he gets bashed, this market will get bashed, I think, as well. Of course, the election's still a few months away. We don't know what's going to happen based on the last four, year, four years ago when everybody thought Hillary was going to win. It was totally off. We still have no idea what's going to happen. But when the president gets bashed and when the president's a Republican and he's arguing for lower taxes, especially which is beneficial for stock markets, and you have another president, uh, sorry, presidential candidate, Biden, who's arguing for higher taxes, which is usually poor for stock markets, the stock markets will take this as a negative. So based on a medium term prognosis over the next few months, I think you should keep a very close eye on what develops over this situation as I think that it's going to affect these stock markets. Whenever you start seeing more news about this, be careful as to how this moves. To be honest, the markets, they're not taking into account as that much about right now coronavirus. I'm surprised myself, but I think regarding the presidential election, the markets will be a lot more sensitive to stock markets. So last part of my video, all this regarding the charts, regarding what's going to happen. Uh, we're also regarding the tra presidential election. What is my recommendation on U.S. stocks? As I said before, short term and long term, separate your portfolio. Long term, continue to invest always. It's all noise. Long term, you're holding this stuff for 5, 10, 20, 30 50 years, depending on how long you live. Ignore the noise. Don't mind so much and just continue with your plan. Markets can go up, down, crash all over the place. You should continue with your plan because if you continue with the plan that I stated out here, when stocks go up a lot, this green part will become more than your usual percentage, 40 to 60%. And then any incremental cash flow, you will be putting into the red and the yellow version. So as long as you keep fixed this bottom percentages, whatever you create, keep it fixed. Don't change it. Automatically, any new amount of money that you invest will go into the underperforming asset. This is the beauty of this long-term investment portfolio. You're not going to, as long as you keep these percentages straight, if one asset goes up a lot, then you will be forced to buy any new cash that you have into the underperforming. You'll be buying the cheaper stuff, basically. This is your long-term. On a short-term basis, I recommend that you continue to not really do much. It's very difficult to see a trend right now. It's very, very hard. Um, I'm actually still not seeing a very strong trend at all in either direction. I have a little bit of a position still in FXI, which I recommended. Uh, it's been a very, very nice trade over just the last few days. Uh, besides that, I have FXI long. I have Jets long. Uh, I have Bitcoin a little bit long. I have gold, uh, silver, platinum a little bit long. This is all short term, separate from the long term. And then as a hedge, I am still selling QQQ, the tech stock, uh, the tech ETF, NASDAQ, uh, just because this is a hedge, right? It's an insurance policy in case the market crashes. And right now, looking at the Bollinger Band on the NASDAQ here and on Amazon, it seems like this is a good time to be a little bit more aggressive on the hedge. So I'm still 50-50 in my portfolio, 50% of my short-term portfolio is hedged, as in short, NASDAQ, QQQ, and the other 50% is allocated into the other positions that I said, Jets, FXI, Gold Futures, uh, et cetera. So that's how I'm positioned short-term. Uh, Long-term, I'm not changing anything, to be honest. You should never change, depending on the news at all. Long-term, you should always keep this uh, rule straight of keeping these percentages no matter what.
So guys, hopefully this video was useful. Let me know what you think, comments, etc. Uh, guys, I'm also going to be posting. Uh, I was just on Tokyo TV this week. It's a major big news station. So I'll put, be putting the link below. I'm sorry, it's going to be in Japanese, guys. But if you guys can take a look. That would be great. Also, I'll post the link for my uh, new book that's coming out. Uh, it's been ranked number one right now on Amazon for new releases uh, in the business section in all of Japan. So please take a look. If you can't read uh, Japanese, well, it's too bad. I guess you can't buy it. <laughs> but uh, just see my tweet and follow me on Twitter and retweeting anything. That itself would be a big enough support. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. Looking forward to your comments and have a splendid weekend. Thanks so much.